Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ancient Warfare Answers. I hope you're doing well in this new year. Uh, I'm going to look at an answer, a question, <laughs> uh, and hopefully give some form of an answer from Brendan in just a minute. Um, but of course, you can ask us a question on any ancient warfare related topic and we'll try and give it an answer. Uh, you can support us on Patreon. There's three levels of support. Just go to Patreon forward slash ancient warfare podcast. Uh, you can be a legionary, an optio or a centurion. Now, the question from Brendan is the low casualty rate uh, that the Macedonian phalanx suffers from archers at the Battle of Issus and Galgamela. Why was the case would make an interesting subject if I hadn't considered. Thank you, Brendan. And indeed, the casualties of Alexander the Great's battles are uh, very interesting and also quite problematic. So doing some quick jotting, we've got the th three major battles. So we'll do Granicus, Issus, and Galgamela. Uh, there are, of course, battles later on in Alexander's campaigns. But these three uh, have the widest range of sources available and the widest, unfortunately, the widest discrepancy in the actual casualty numbers. So uh, at the Battle of the Granicus, for instance, what we've got is Plutarch telling us there were nine casualties. In Aristobulus, he quotes, um, of course, on campaign, 34 casualties in total, 25 in the cavalry and nine in the infantry. That's really, really small. Um, Arian has 25 companion cavalry dying in the first charge, 60 more cavalry and 30 infantry dying. Uh, Justin tells us that there's 120 cavalry who are casualties in the war. So Brennan's question is about the, the phalanx casualties. Um, so remember, nine, very, very low. We can compare that, and this is part of the problem with the casualty numbers in Alexander's battles, is with the Persians. Uh, Diodorus tells us that 2,000 Persian cavalry died and 10,000 infantry and 20,000 prisoners. Arian tells us that 1,000 cavalry and 18,000 infantry died. And Plutarch gives us 2,500 cavalry and 20,000 infantry. So uh, if we compare those according to the sources um, across a wide variety, uh, a variety, we've got nine Macedonian infantry dying versus between 18 and 20,000 Persians. And the problem is with that, you've got the issue of uh, modern sort of takes on the Macedonian phalanx and Persian warfare have tended to want to see the Persians as more equal than uh, the Macedonians and even the Greek hoplites before them in combat. And that's just not something that's borne out in the sources in terms of the, the numbers of casualties they give. Uh, so you have to rewrite or ignore those in order to maintain that argument, which I'm not really in favour of. Um, there's also been an argument that the uplifted spears, the Sarissa spears of the Macedonian phalanx would not have offered protection to the Macedonian phalangites in battle. Uh, and again, I think that when you look at the numbers of casualties, according to the sources, that simply seems to be the case that either the arrows are not effective, which is a much harder argument to maintain, or that the uh, the armor of the Macedonians is so good that it stops the arm, stops the arrows from injuring, which again is difficult, or that the, the, the upraised spears of the Sarissa disrupted the flight of the arrows. Now, it could be a combination of all those things, but I certainly think that the uplifted spears of the Macedonian phalanx, the, the 9,000 men of the phalanx, would have done something towards disrupting the flight of arrows and, and javelins and everything else. And the interesting thing about these battles is that there's greater discrepancy uh, in casualties in the cavalry than there is in the infantry. So that's the Battle of Granicus. Uh, when we move forward to the Battle of the Issus, again, we've got a massive discrepancy between Persian and Macedonian, um, what's the word, casualties. Uh, so Arian says that there's 100,000 Persian infantry killed and 10,000 cavalry. Plutarch Curtius and Dio all have 110,000 casualties in total. Justin gives us 61,000 infantry and 40,000 prisoners and 10,000 cavalry. So he's also at the 111,000 mark. So they're similar in terms of where they uh, place the number. But um, interestingly, Justin's the only one who tells us 40,000 prisoners and the others tend to seem to include that in the casualty uh, number. When we compare that to the Macedonians, again, we get a huge discrepancy. 
According to Curtius, there are 400 and, sorry, 504 wounded Macedonians and 32 infantry killed, uh, as opposed to 150 cavalry. Uh, Justin has 130 infantry and 150 cavalry. Uh, John Yardley, the editor of Curtis, Curtius, amends the number that he's got to 4,500 Macedonian wounded and 302 missing, which is odd because 4,500 is a 50% casualty rate uh, for the Macedonian phalanx, which is highly unlikely. Couldn't keep conquering Persia if half your men get wounded in every battle. But again, there's this huge number uh, difference between the numbers. 504 wounded and 32 dead is is specific, but in- incredibly low. They're killing 100,000 Persians uh, and only 32 Macedonians get killed. That's a really low number. Uh, but again, why are they... Is there such a discrepancy? And the problem is you can't throw out all the numbers. Uh, you can't say, oh, that's just a ridiculously low number. We'll ignore it. And because at the same time, you have to say, for the Persian numbers, well, that's a ridiculously high number. We have to ignore it. In which case, you are left with no numbers, which is problematic. And indeed, the, the, the issue with numbers in ancient warfare in general across more than a millennia of history is, is problematic. Galgamela, what we have there is Arian tells us that 100 men are killed. Uh, now, remember, in, in Galgamela, according to most of the sources, the Macedonian phalanx of around 40,000 men is outnumbered by 40,000 to a million. So there should be more casualties, and there are not. According to Arian, 100 men get lost by the Macedonians, as opposed to 300,000 Persians. That's a lot of killing by a very few, uh, you know, 40,000. They're almost killing 10 men each. Um, Diodorus has 90,000 Persian casualties and only 500 Macedonians. Curtius has 40,000 Persians, getting lower, uh, and 300 Macedonians. And the Oxyrhynchus historian gives us, interestingly, a much higher number of Macedonian casualties. 1,000 infantry, 200 cavalry, uh, and in comparison to 53,000 Persians. Now, in terms of the Battle of Galgamela, where Alexander is facing the greatest odds he's faced so far, the Oxyrhynchus historian, who doesn't survive for the earlier battles, gives us the most likely numbers because they're higher on the Macedonian side and not the lowest on the Persian side, um, that's courteous, but the the 1,000 infantry and 200, 1,200 Macedonian cavalries, sorry, 1,200 Macedonian casualties and 53,000 Persians seems to be a much more reasonable loss of men for the Macedonians. Still very small, but in comparison to the victory that they win and the fact that they're so vastly outnumbered, that seems to be a better ratio, if you like. But again, you're only losing a thousand infantry. That's, you know, that is uh, almost 12% casualties. That's quite high in a battle, but it's the biggest odds. Uh, it's the big cul- culminating battle of the entire campaign. So in a way, those casualty numbers are, to me, more believable than some of the others. But they're still incredibly low, and you still have to answer how did the uh, Macedonians lose so few men, especially when at Galgamela we've got this, you know, we've got chariots which are causing all sorts of problems for uh, the Macedonians. They, they are counted, we're told they're counted, and then of course the, the chariots disappear from the, the accounts, as do the elephants. So it's a really interesting sort of look. There must have been something, whether it's armour, whether it's the uh, the ineffectiveness of the enemy weapons, uh, or whether it's the upraised shields of the of the, the phalanx, or a combination, and I think it's probably best to say it's a combination, that those uh, aspects of Macedonian warfare really limit the number of casualties they're suffering um, against the Persians. At the same time, they are inflicting huge numbers of uh, casualties on the Persians, um, and it's very hard to reject that um, in terms of the overwhelming victories that the the Macedonians win in those first three battles. So I think that it's a combination of those things that the, I think the upraised spears of the, of the Sarissa phalanx disrupt the flight of javelins and arrows, meaning they fall harmlessly and don't cause injuries. The armor of the individual phalangite is superior to Persian weaponry and that they are essentially able to deflect, defend against Persian attacks. In which case, we're never going to get to the bottom of what were the actual numbers of casualties, but it would seem to be that those aspects of it are why there's such a low number of uh, Macedonian casualties. But of course, 
there's no way Alexander would have been able to campaign in the Persian Empire for a decade if his casualty numbers were particularly higher. That low number of casualties really does allow him to continue uh, his inexorable advance and campaign winning ways uh, for such a long time. So in a way, you have to accept it, regardless of how uncomfortable you are with how low the numbers are. Thanks very much. We'll see you again soon. Bye.